I'm doing a little video here. Well, it's going to be probably pretty long, actually, uh, on the knives that I bought on my vacation, um, because I know some of you are going to be very interested in that. Um, I didn't buy a whole lot of knives, I say that, but I have like a jar full over here. Um, but I bought those at a yard sale. Um, but before I get started here, because I know nobody's in here yet and all that, um, yeah, anyway, trip went good. It was long. It was like three and a half weeks, something like that. I just got back. Well, we got back to her place yesterday and I got home today. Um, it was a lot of driving, a lot of sitting in a van driving across the country. So that was a, a long, it, it felt long, I guess would be the thing. Um, and I don't think it would have been nearly as bad except for being in the van, which um, made every bump feel awful. <laughs> uh, switching to my car and driving yesterday and then today was much nicer than sitting in the van or driving the van. Um, but anyway, uh, before I get started here, uh, I'll give you guys a sneak peek on some videos that are going to be coming out. Uh, a new Baron Sun Barlow. This is their Maroon series or whatever. There'll be a video coming out on that. I don't know when. Probably not too long from now. Um, I have a, another case knife I'm doing a video on soon, uh, if you can read that there. Um, so that's coming. There's a Rosecraft, Rosecraft Blades video coming at some point here. And I got two other uh, Baron Sun Red Hill exclusive knives. Um, so all those videos are coming at some point. Uh, but that's not what this is about. This is about the knives I bought on the trip here um so let's start talking about that uh so the first thing we stopped at an antique mall in illinois i think it was um illinois or indiana i think it was illinois um but we stopped at an antique mall there and the guy had a whole like bunch of pocket knives and stuff like he had cases full of them and like he had a five dollar knife basket which i always love the first thing that caught my eye was this because i'm really into the big barlows and everything um and i saw the nice saw cut and everything and it was in pretty good condition it looked like and it has been sharpened a bit you can tell by the recurve on the blade there I don't know anything about this company, but O.N.B. Barlow, and that's marked Germany, looks like. Yeah, so then it's marked Germany. So this is from Germany. The action on this knife is really good, as you will have heard when I was opening it. I paid like $60 for this, I think, um, which I don't think is bad. Uh, probably you know, not quite as valuable as something like a case or a Russell or something like that, obviously, but a neat knife, pretty good condition. Um, and I really like the uh, daddy or granddaddy. These like five inch Barlow's are like kind of my thing. Uh, probably my favorite or second favorite pattern. If you're hearing rain on the roof, um, it's pouring right now. So sorry about that. Don't know if you'll be able to hear that or not but it is pouring right now. Um, so then in the $5 knife bin, I found this, which is just like a little boy's knife kind of thing. Some sort of synthetic handles. It is really raining. Um, but the reason why I decided I wanted this is because it's got a stamp on the blade there that says Joseph Rogers and Sons. Um, and it is stamped into the blade. That's not an etch or anything. It's a it's a stamp, so that's cool. And then the tang stamp here. The action on this knife sucks. Um, but let's see here. Number six. Norfolk's Sheffield. So this is a Sheffield knife. The action, like I said, the action on this knife sucks. I don't know if it would get any better if I put some mineral oil in it or not, but like it, it's not in the best condition. The whole reason I wanted this was because of the stamp on the blade, really. 
And like I said, I think it was $5 in you know, one of those like $5 bins that you see sometimes at like flea markets and stuff. Uh, except for this was at an antique mall um, or an antique place, not an antique mall. Um, and then the last knife I got from him, when I say him, it's the old man that owns the antique place, um, was this old timer, um, new in box pretty much. And I'm not sure exactly what year this is from, obviously. Um, but it's the 77, yeah, 77 OT, which is a muskrat, which is a pattern that I like quite a bit. Uh, so, you know, new in box muskrat or improved muskrat because it uses two back springs. Um, but this knife will probably actually get carried because I think I paid, paid like $40 for this, something like that, which is about what, which is less than you pay for like, you know, a decent brand new knife these days so i was pretty happy to pay that uh for an american made uh old timer muskrat so you know this will probably get carried a bit and all that um you can see there charade usa 77 ot um nice little muskrat pocket knife and everything the serpentine pattern um yeah and it came with the box and i think there's paperwork in here too which is cool. Is there paperwork in here? There is paperwork in here. The box is a little bit beat up because I assume it's been opened and closed a bunch, but you can see there, straight old timer, bunch of paperwork on it, everything. Or is this paperwork or is this warranty stuff? This might be warranty stuff. It's a little bit of both. So it's got, you know, some some stuff there it's like a lot of warranty information obviously no longer good because charade is uh as of i think 2007 <laughs> no longer a u.s company Ooh. thank you tarot tarot Carol, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Every time I see your, one of your comments, I'm always wondering how you pronounce that. I assume it's not Terrell because it doesn't look like Terrell, so it'd be like Terrell or something. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so that was from the antique place. Stopped at another uh, quote-unquote antique place, which was kind of just a, like, shed. Well, a little bit bigger than a shed. It was like one of those buildings that a lot of people use for, like, workshops and stuff, where it's like that standing ter 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 yule. I'm not good at pronouncing things. <laughs> but we stopped at another antique place that was, like, one of those standing, like, sheet metal buildings, kind of, you know, that a lot of people use for, like, garages and workshops and stuff but it was absolutely full of junk, like piled to the ceiling almost. Um, and I found this, which I thought was cool. Um, it is a Western, uh, and I'm not really a fixed blade guy, um, but it's a Western knife here, Boulder, Colorado. And it is a fixed blade, like I said. I did try to clean this up a little bit. It was quite a bit uh, rustier than this. And now it's just kind of got the black, like, corrosion on it, staining and all that. Um, the tip on it is broken off. So at some point, somebody was trying to pry something with it. Um, but other than that, it's in pretty good condition, other than just, you know, the uh, staining on the blade, the little bit of corrosion and all that. Um, it's full tang knife, it seems. Um, and then this is like, I guess some sort of synthetic that was made to look like wrapped leather or stacked leather. Cause it's not stacked leather because in order for it to be stacked leather, this would have to be like a stick tang and it's not. And then it's got like an aluminum cap on it. Like the, uh, buck 119 does. Um, but it seemed like a pretty cool knife. Um, I think I paid a little bit more than I wanted to for, I think I paid like $28 or something like that. Which, once again, I have no idea because I'm not a fixed blade guy. Um, but I did like this particular knife. And then one of the cool things about it is the sheath here has somebody's name on it, Billy Olson. 
and BSA with the little star for Boy Scouts of America. So I'm assuming some Boy Scout owned this uh, fixed blade knife here. Um, put his name in the sheath and everything. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and that alone kind of makes it worth probably a little bit more just for that little bit of uh, history, kind of, pretty much. Um, but, you know, cool fixed blade. Uh, I don't really know much about fixed blades, but... Um, you know, I figured it was probably worth a little bit. And it's a neat knife and all that. Um, but I have no idea. I know Western was a company that made pocket knives, but that is a fixed blade, obviously. Um, so, so far, pr probably the Daddy Barlow is probably the, like, win of the the trip. Um, there's a key in there, but <laughs> but there's, there's knives in here. Um, I got this at a garage sale. And I paid ten dollars for this whole uh, jar of random knives, um, some of which are absolute junk, and some of which are pretty nice. Um, but like I said, I paid ten dollars for it. So starting off strong here, uh, that's already worth ten dollars. You guys know that. Um, in here is a little. I think they call it the Pocket Pal. How do I get this out of here? And it's just a little, you know. Just a little knife with uh, two blades on it. And it's got somebody's name on it or a place, perhaps. Paulina Market. I'm not sure. But that alone's worth more than $10, just this one Victorinox knife. So already winning when it comes to this jar of knives. Um, so I'm going to keep that. Um, some other stuff. This is like a letter opener here that's got somebody's name on it or a company name on it. A uh, letter opener, and then it's got a little pen blade and what's over here? Nail file? Looks like a nail file. Yeah, then like a nail file. Um, so, yeah, letter opener. Nothing super exciting there. Um, and an interesting little like leather opener <laughs> sheath, which is funny. Um, next. Once again, another uh, Victorinox here. And this is a classic SD. I think I've promised this to my girlfriend already because um, she doesn't have one. This also says something on it. Paulina Market, Chicago. So I guess these. I guess that's a place, Paulina Market. I've never been to Chicago. Um, but you guys know what a classic SD is, you know. But like I said, I've promised this to my girlfriend already. So this will be her little keychain knife. Um, and, you know, these are real handy, these little classic SDs, because they have scissors, they have nail file, they have tweezer and uh, toothpick, which are probably my two most used tools on a Victorinox Classic SD. Um, I don't really ever use it as a knife, but as tweezers and toothpick, it's wonderful. Um, then we got a Cabela sheath here and some little multi-tool very green i didn't open this so we got a very green multi-tool looks like a light maybe there it's supposed to be so i'm not sure if that would come on or not it does look like a light but i'm not sure exactly what that is um and then i assume you open this up and it's pliers keychains getting in the way that's a bad design Pliers, they are spring loaded. They don't. Is the keychain in the way or do they not close? They do close the whole way. Okay. This keychain's a horrible design. I don't know why they decided to put that in that area, but it's an awful design. So, spring loaded uh, needle nose pliers, pretty useful. Um, you know, pretty cheap ripoff of like a Leatherman of some kind, probably. Uh, but they are spring loaded, so that's nice. Over here, we got a bunch of other tools. We got a saw that eh, feels like it would work as a saw. It's very tiny for a saw, though. A little clip blade knife, which eh, not very sharp. Does have a spring on it? Not very sharp at all. Not a very good spring. Um, and then these other tools you can't really get to without opening the other tools, I guess. So that's a bad design. Close this saw blade here. So then we got a bottle opener and a Phillips head screwdriver. 
So interesting little tool from Cabela's. I'm assuming this is probably one of their uh, cheaper things that they sell for like, you know, five or ten dollars or something like that. Um, but yeah, you know. Uh, so that came in that jar. I still got a bunch of other knives in here. Uh, TL29. The TL29 is an electrician's knife. I now have three of these. Um, this one is actually in pretty good shape, considering, other than the plastic handles, which I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> They're just disintegrating. Um, and then you got your screwdriver. Does the lock work? The lock does work. So another TL29 could use some work. I'm not sure what's going on with the handles or how they got like this. Um, kind of interesting. But TL29 is a good knife. Um, usually pretty affordable. Except for these days, it's actually gotten quite a bit more expensive. Um, this one's an interesting one. Um, because it seems like some cheap Chinese made thing, but it actually feels pretty good. So I'm not sure where this was made. It's got bone handles. It's missing a piece there. Uh, it says invincible on the blade, which is funny. And it's got, what does it say? Parker Cutlery Co. My light is really bright here. Park, Parker Cut Co. Japan. So... Interesting little knife. It's kind of, it kind of, the shape of the blade kind of almost reminds me of like a spider co, like uh, the shape of the blade. Anyway, and it's a lock back. And it's actually, the lockup's really good on this. It's got no play and all that. So this is actually decently made. Um, but I, once again, I'll assume it's probably a fairly cheap knife when they made it and everything. But it is decently well made. Um, and it it's actually really, like it actually feels good in your hand. Like it, ergonomically, if you want to use that word, it's quite good. So that was also in the jar of knives that I bought for $10. Um, we got this, which is a advertising knife. Um, a lot of these don't really say who made them. They just have like USA on them. Yeah, this one's just got USA on it. Don't know who made it. Probably if I had to guess either Imperial or there was a company that used to make knives in the USA called Novelty Knife Co., which I think Smoky Mountain Knife Works owns the rights to now, and they make cheap Chinese knives. But um, I don't know who made this, obviously. It's a little gritty. It's probably just rust and stuff from over the years, so I would assume that if I put some mineral oil in it, it would smooth out. But just a cool, you know, advertiser, advertising knife, fairly cheap um, knife back in the day. Of course, now I have no idea. Um, but cool knife, certainly with the advertising on it and everything. There are people who just collect advertising knives. Um, a cheap, cheap modern folder <laughs> here, made in China, almost certainly. It's got these purple plastic handles, though. Or maybe they're aluminum. They're aluminum. Wow. But yeah, just a cheap. Does it say something on there? Maple. Maple? It's like it says maple. This is a maple knife. Not related to maple donuts um, or maple syrup. Uh, but it is a cheap, you know, Chinese made modern folder. Not super interesting. Uh, probably go in my like coffee can knives or whatever. Um, I guess someday I'll have to do a video on my coffee can knives. <laughs> um, but yeah, just a super cheap modern folder. Nothing very interesting about that. Um, so the two knives that I saw in this jar that made me want to buy it was the TL29 and this. <laughs> um, I think I just did a video on the Buck 301 not long ago. This is the Buck. 303 which is another stockman it's smaller but it is a you know buck american made stockman it does have a little chip out of the blade here which i can you can see that now i think but i should be able to hopefully sharpen that out um but you know stockman knife all three blades are here which is nice a lot of times you know somebody will snap off a blade because they don't understand how to use a pocket knife um 
Yeah, it's worn and everything. You can definitely tell that this is spent some time in somebody's pocket or something. Um, but other than that, it's in pretty good shape. Um, it needs, like I said, it needs to be sharpened because that chip is pretty substantial there. But other than that, it's in pretty good shape still. So like I said, this knife and the TL29 are the two knives that I saw. And I was like, I want that jar of knives. <laughs> and the guy was like, I'll sell it to you for $10. And I was like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, so I ended up paying Nina $10 for it. So um, just some cheap, like one of those fake key knives. I'm certainly made in China or Pakistan. Oh, Taiwan. Ooh, we're getting fancy now. Um, but this is just one of those fake key knives. It says dad on it. Um, Father's Day was recent, wasn't it? Um, so I guess, you know, an interesting little thing, you know, if you want to really hide a knife on your keys for whatever reason, um, you know, that might be a useful knife there. I don't know why you would need to hide a knife on your keys, but you know. Um, so then more, we have a folding, oh, that's right, the button locks it shut. We have a button lock, uh, you know, these button lock folders are real popular now. You guys know that. Can I f oh, you can. You can flick it open and closed. That's how popular these button lock folders are getting. Um, this, this is a, um, this is a folding uh, utility knife, obviously. You know, kind of replace the uh, blade there and everything. It is funny that it's a button lock, though. But yeah, just a cheap utility knife folding, locking open, which is, you know, kind of nice if you're using one of these all the time, I guess. Uh, I don't really use utility knives, but, you know, for somebody who does, that might be handy. Um, yeah, I know the buck's worth, well, I don't know how much the buck's worth, but like I said, I saw the buck and a TL-29, and I was like, well, I want that jar, that jar of knives. <laughs> um, I didn't even know what else was in it. I think this is just a cheap, like, ripoff of the Swiss Army knife. Yes, stainless china. This is a cheap ripoff of a Victorinox SD. It's got these flat metal handles. So I guess you could engrave somebody's name in it if you wanted to, for whatever reason. How bad are the scissors? Hmm, I've seen worse. I wonder how bad they cut. Probably pretty bad. I don't have any paper. There's some paper. How bad are these scissors? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Completely useless. Um, so the cheap Chinese copies of Victorinoxes usually are not worth um, the money. I wouldn't recommend anybody buying them for any reason. <laughs> Just buy a real Victorinox. They're really not that expensive. Um, so that's pretty much junk. Uh, I've got one of these, which is a knife that I think I already have something like this. But it's got, you know, Westfield, Wisconsin, which is interesting because, you know, I did get these in Wisconsin at a yard sale. Um, but this is just a Chinese made, another like copy of a Victorinox knife, really. Uh, how bad are the scissors on this? You're going to find out. Oh, they're kind of cutting. Not really. Okay, they suck too. Um, real quick, just to just because I want to. Um, Victorinox scissors are excellent, and copies of Victorinox's scissors are usually awful. Um, so, like I said, if you're gonna buy a Swiss Army knife, buy a real Swiss Army knife. Don't buy some weird copy of it. Um, but this is interesting because, you know, it's kind of like a modern version of an advertising knife, pretty much. And like I said, I think I've had or do still have something similar to this um, somewhere. Um, okay, we're getting down here. I think this is another <laughs> Chinese copy of the Victorinox. Yes, it is almost certainly. Yes, stainless china. Ooh. Okay. Um probably honestly not the worst one yet it's got scissors gotta test those scissors yeah i don't know if they just don't sharpen scissors on 
cheap for Tornox copies or or what? <laughs> but but um, they just do not work very well. So I've got a bunch of Victorian. Well, not a bunch. I've got a few Victorinox copies here. <laughs> uh, or Swiss Army knife copies that are awful. Um, this one's got something on it. Field gear. I, I don't think so. It doesn't even have the tweezers or the toothpick. I don't think anybody wants that. This is their field gear. Uh, okay, we're getting kind of low here. For some reason, there's a key in here. I don't know what that's to. <laughs> the guy that sold it to me left one of his keys in here. This looks like a copy of like a Leatherman. Um, what is it? The dime? No, that's Gerber or something. What is the Leatherman small needle nose plier one called? Because I know that the scissor one's the micro because I have one. Okay, this looks like it should be. Okay, it is. So this is a copy of, yes, that's what it's called. It's the, the squirt. Um, but But anyway, you know, Needle nose plier is pretty useful. Um, little knife blade there. I'm assuming, yeah, this is probably a copy. Yeah, so to say, I'm assuming this is a copy. If I just pulled out those tools and now I'm pretty sure it is a copy. <laughs> Although, I don't know for sure. Nope, definitely not a. Definitely not a Leatherman. Honestly, not the worst thing in this jar, though, obviously. I don't know what it says on there. Let's see if I can see away from the camera. Well, it is stainless. You, you tell it's stainless because it says so. Um, but obviously, you know, not, not a Leatherman, so not Leatherman quality. But honestly, this probably wouldn't be awful if you wanted to have a little multi-tool. Um, but yeah, so we're getting down here. I got three more, it looks like. I think this is a Pakistan knife. Looks looks Pakistani. Yes, that, all the Pakistan knives look the same. <laughs> all the Pakistan lockback knives look the same. They're all like weird copies of Buck 110s, but like not done well. Um, this is a tiny knife, obviously. It's been used and carried quite a bit by somebody um so that's interesting um just a cheap little lock back the lockup is not great on it as you might imagine but you know this spent a lot of time in somebody's pocket lots of brass corrosion for whatever reason it seems like these pakistan knives get that brass corrosion way easier than any other brass knife i've ever handled uh, but yeah, so that's just a super cheap little Pakistan lock back. Um, nothing super cool about that or anything. Obviously, well, this is what I didn't look at. This is an Imperial. Now it's a like plastic Imperial, tiny little plastic lock back. Is this an Ireland or US made Imperial? That's the question. Oh, it's Ireland. Okay, so this is actually, you know, a half decent made little plastic knife, probably. Uh, but just a tiny little imperial lock back here, plastic handles, nothing super cool about that. But if you just wanted a tiny little knife, it would work well for that. Um, you wouldn't be able to carry it in Ireland, though, I don't think, because it locks. <laughs> and then lastly, the last knife in the jar is another Victorinox uh, classic is cool because you know it's always nice to have some of these around um because they are very useful i keep one of these on my keys um all the time because it's such a useful little uh thing to have because like i've discussed i use the tweezers and the toothpick more than anything else really um because they're very good 
Uh, but yeah, so I've got two of them from the jar. Uh, the Victorinox Pocket Pal, which is neat. Um, and then, of course, you know, the knives that are actually like more of my style, which are like these things here. The TL29, whatever this is, the advertising knife from the Buck 303. Um, so, yeah, I did pretty well from the jar, obviously. Um, you know, I still think probably the best thing from the entire trip as far as what I bought was probably this uh, Daddy Barlow from Germany here. Um, I'll show this again because I guess I know some of you weren't here. Um, but the Tang stamp says ONB Barlow, Germany. So I have no idea. This, you know, could be a cheaper knife or whatever. I paid $60 for it because it looked pretty well made and looked pretty old. And I really like that saw cut there. But I've got no idea the history on this. It almost seems like it's stainless steel, but I don't know. Somebody may have just polished it at some point. The action on it is wonderful um just doing a quick show for the people that weren't here before uh stamped into the blade joseph rogers and sons that was five bucks so i wanted it for the stamp um the charade muskrat um this fixed blade here that's got somebody's name on it in the boy scouts of america made by western which i thought was kind of cool uh but that's all the knives that I bought on my trip. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll probably be ending this here because there's not really anything else to talk about that much. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I've got some videos coming out soon-ish. Well, I have videos scheduled all the way through like the end of July. So there's a bunch of videos already scheduled and everything but you know some more videos that are going to be coming soon is i bought one of these maroon i think they call them baron son barlows um i got a couple of red hill cutlery exclusive um baron son knives it's a rose craft blade knife coming out a video coming out and if you know what knives i like you may have already figured out what kind of knife that is and then i've got a case video coming out too uh, soon ish uh, like i said i have videos scheduled all the way through the end of july so i don't know if they'll be like a month from now or if they'll be you know uh sooner than that i don't know i haven't really decided yet we'll figure it out uh but anyway that's gonna be it for this little bit this little live video i figured i really wanted to do a live video while i was on my trip but it just didn't work out with the timing and everything and we were trying to maximize our driving so a lot of times we wouldn't get to the hotel till like nine or like eight or nine a lot of nights and you know that's pretty late especially when it's eight or nine on the west coast because that means it's like one o'clock here um on the east east coast so that's all the knives i bought on the trip Plus a little sneak peek at, you know, some videos that are going to be coming out. Um, but anyway, I'm going to end the live video. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, I'm going to try to do more live videos, I think, just because it's, it's easier. I don't have to worry about stuff. And you guys can comment, which I think is kind of interesting. You guys can comment while I'm still doing the video and let me know things. So... That's kind of cool. So I might try to do more live videos. We'll see. Uh, but this is going to be it for this one. And I'll see you guys some other time.